All right, now uh, I'm going to explain a little bit about the way contactors are used as uh, as motor starters and some of the benefits that they provide when we use a um, an electrical device contactor. We're going to couple it with a uh, an overload block to turn it into a motor starter. So um, they are kind of interchangeable. Now we we're going to get into the overload blocks here in a little bit, but for right now let's just talk about uh, some of the benefits of using a, a contactor or a electromagnetic device to control a, um, an electrical circuit. So our power circuit, which is down here, no matter what we use to control our motor starters, this is just two different scenarios of the same thing, we're always going to have a set of contacts connected directly in series to the motor. This is a 110 volt motor, 120 volt motor. You'll have one set. If it was a 240, you'd have a set of contacts here and another set over here. It doesn't really matter. Um, it, it's still basically the same, and you'd probably draw it in a single line as this way anyway. Now, this top version here uses a maintained switch to turn this motor starter, to energize the motor starter coil, which pulls in our contacts and turns this motor off and on. Okay? If we're using a maintained switch up here, so just a, a toggle switch, could be a light switch on a wall, we call this low voltage release. Okay? So every time the voltage in the control circuit becomes low enough that it can't hold the contactor in, it releases. Every time the power comes back on, it provided the switch is closed, of course, when the, the power across that circuit um, comes back, that contactor will pull back in and that motor will restart. Okay? A low voltage release circuit, perfectly acceptable for something like, let's say, a sump pump. Right? Uh, you get water coming into your basement, power goes out for 10 minutes, when the power comes back on, um, you want that pump to, to start up and, and go back to getting water out of your out of your basement, right? So a low voltage release system on, on something like that works just fine, right? All we would do is instead of the, a switch here, it would be a float switch, but same deal. Now, the, so those work fine for there, but the other type of, of, uh, of control circuit we're going we're gonna to talk about and the one that you're going to do a, a lot of work with here in second year is called low voltage protection. In a low voltage protection system, um, we're going to use a our motor our motor starter or contactor connected to the, as part of the motor starter to control the uh, the electric motor no problem same same deal only this time we're going to use a set of contacts that's fed off of that same that's connected to that same armature on that same coil to maintain our circuit after our momentary push button has been used okay the reason we do this and the reason it's called low voltage protection is it protects people from this motor accidentally coming, turning back on by itself in the event of, of losing power or something shutting, um, something bumping the switch, the, the stop switch. Okay? Um, when we did the low voltage release, said you got a sump pump that's running downstairs, um, you want it, sh it shuts off when the power goes out, you want it to come back on. What if you got a great big saw, big table saw in your in your garage, and you're working away with it, and the power goes out, the blade stops, it shuts down, and a minute later, power comes back on. You don't want that saw to automatically restart, right? It would be dangerous. So instead, we use a momentary start button and holding contacts, so that way, if our power is lost to this coil, 
whether it's a power outage or somebody hits the stop button or anything like that happens, maybe there's a safety edge in here, who knows. If any one of those items ha or events happen and that motor starter coil loses power, shuts the motor off, we want to physically have to restart that circuit. Okay, so and the way this is going to work is as soon as you push your start button, you make contact here, motor starter pulls in, that closes this set of contacts, and when you release this push button and it reopens, we now have a current path right here to go to our motor starter, and as long as that's happening, this set of contacts will be closed, and that motor will be running. When the stop button's pressed, or the safety edge um, gets tripped, or we lose power, any one of those events, as soon as this loses power, we reopen this set of contacts, which reopens this set of contacts, and it'll wait until we can reestablish that current flow with our push button. Okay? So that's the difference between low voltage protection and low voltage release and how we use a contactor to, per, to um, that's the difference between low voltage release and low voltage protection and how we utilize a contactor to provide low voltage protection.